My name is Sanrin Kenak, and I am the Director of Digital Archival Projects at the Waldenstein Plattner Institute here in New York. We are hosting several programs this year in honor of the 150th anniversary of the birth of the Impressionist movement in 1874. And this particular series focuses on women who had an influential role in the development of avant-garde painting during this period. Our program this afternoon will focus on the exhibition Impressionism and its Overlooked Woman, currently on view at the Odergaard, a museum located in Charlotte Den Lund, Denmark, which holds one of the northern, northern Europe's most important collections of French Impressionism. Highlighting the works of five women artists, Berg Morisot, Marie Cassatt, Eva Gonzalez, Marie Brackmo, and Marie Bashkit Kurtzeff, this exhibition follows their paths at the height of Impressionism. Despite facing barriers such as limited access to formal education or certain spaces and artistic motif, these visionary artists boldly capture the essence of modern life with unparalleled sensitivity and poetic flair. Telling us about the vibrant world of this overlooked trailblazer is our esteemed speaker for today, Dorothy Vansgaard Nielsen. Dorothy is a senior curator at the Europe Guard and a specialist of 19th century French art. Dorothy has edited numerous catalogues and curated many exhibitions on French Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, as well as on contemporary art. Among others are Impressionism and its Overlooked Woman, in collaboration with the National Gallery of Ireland, where the exhibition will travel later this year, Ai Weiwei, Water Lilies, Enigmatic Underworlds, uh, Jean Gauguin and Clara Ilja, Gauguin and his friend, and Monet Beyond Impressionism. Dorothy, we are honored to have you here with us today. But before I turn the screen over to you, I'd like to, to remind everyone that uh, to use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen to write down questions, which I will ask to Dorothy during the Q&A part of this session. Thank you, and now over to you, Dorothy. Thank you. As we know, this year marks the 150 years since the first Impressionist exhibition was held in the former studio of the photographer Nadar in Paris. The anniversary presents a welcome opportunity to focus on a less illuminate facet of the movement, whose eight legendary exhibitions from 1874 to 1868 introduced a new style of painting in bright colors placed on the canvas with visible brushstrokes. Our exhibition focuses on five artists whose roles, whose roles have been given less attention in the popular narrative on, of Impressionism. These include Berthe Morisot and Mary Cassatt, as well, as well as more overlooked artists such as Eva Gonzalez, Marie Bragmont and Russian-born Marie Baskitsev. Now, Baskitsev did not belong to the circle of Impressionists, but her self-portraits and feminist activism thematize the obstacles associated with a professional career as an artist at a time when women could not yet study at the art academy, could not leave their home unaccompanied, and could not call themselves artists without a certain loss of reputation. Among the founding members of Impressionism, there was only one woman, Berthe Morisot. The role of men in the movement is emphasized in our exhibition through key works by Edouard Manet, Edgar Degas, and Pierre Auguste Renoir which deal with a central motif of Impressionism, the female model. This also applies to the study for Manet's iconic Déjeuner sur l'herbe, which introduces our exhibition. This scandalous painting ignited the entire confrontation with the Salon's retrogressive art ideal and served as a crucial model for the Impressionists. Also, we chose to have this once shocking painting as an opening picture, as it was shown in the Salon de Refusé in 1863. 
This exhibition featuring more than 2000 refused works paved the way for the blossoming of independent jury-free exhibitions, including the later so-called impressionist exhibitions. As I just mentioned, the female model is a central motif in the Impressionists' paintings, but also in Manet's works. The naked woman looking confidently out at us is the musician, model, and later artist, Victorine Miron. At this time, she was Manet's favorite model and took the central role in several of his most ambitious works. In the likewise 1863 painting Olympia, now in the Monsieur d'Orsay, she again posed as a nude courtesan. Miron, however, broke with many as her own ambitions as, as an artist grew, and from 1876 on, she exhibited regularly at the Salon. Today, we know that women artists played a far greater role in Impressionism than art history has been willing to acknowledge. Their significant contributions to the development of the movement are all the more groundbreaking in the light of the obstacles that the gender norms and conventions of the time placed in the way of their careers. So, Let's have a look on the five women artists included in the exhibition. Beth Morisseau was born in 1841. She grew up in a well-to-do family with two sisters and a brother. Both her parents supported the artistic interest and talent shown by Beth and her elder sister, Edma. In 1864, Morisseau makes a debut at the Salon together with Edma. Ten years later, in 1874, Moiseau is invited by Degas to participate in the first so-called Impressionist exhibition. Turning her back on a rather successful career within the framework of the Salon, she will become one of the most dedicated members of the Impressionist movement as she participates in all eight Impressionist exhibitions, with the exception of the fourth in 1879. Later that same year, Morisot marries Eugène Manny, the brother of Edouard Manny. The latter has up until then been her friend and has portrayed her 11 times. I have included two portraits of Morisot by Edouard Manny on the slide you see here. The one to the right in the Petit Palais in Geneva is currently on display in our exhibition. It must be one of the most astonishing portraits by of Morisseau. It forms the, the pendant to the Monsieur d'Orsay's much more famous portrait, Bert Morisseau with a bouquet of violets, painted the same year and referred to as the Mona Lisa of the 19th century by the author Paul Valéry. And here we see it hanging on the wall in the gallery. Mary Cassatt was born in 1844 in Pennsylvania in the United States of America. She grew up in a wealthy Philadelphia family. She had three brothers and one sister, Lydia, whom she often used as a model, as we shall see in a moment. In 1868, Cassatt exhibited at the Salon for the first time under the name Mary Stevenson. In 1874, in the year of the first Impressionist exhibition, she settles permanently in Paris. In 1879, she exhibited with the Impressionists for the first time at the fourth Impressionist exhibition, and she was invited by Degas. She exhibits four times with the Impressionists. Eva Gonzalez. She was born in 1849. She grew up in an artistic and well-to-do family with roots in Monaco and Spain. Her father was a writer and president of the Société des Gens de Lettres, and her mother was a musician before her marriage. She had a sister, Jeanne, who became her favorite model and who also became a painter in her own right. 
in, 80, in uh, 1850, Rosales makes a debut at the Salon. Like a teacher, Manny, she prefers to make a career within this official exhibition channel and never partakes in the later independent Impressionist exhibitions. However, the Impressionists are to be of great importance to her painting style. Marie Kivon Pesquiot, later Bragmont, was born in either 1840 or 1841, we actually do not know. Her father, a naval officer, died shortly after her birth and her mother remarried. She grew up in the working class and had a brother and a sister, Louise Kivon, who later became her favorite model. In 1879, Bagmore exhibited with the Impressionists for the first time at the fourth Impressionist exhibition. And she exhibits three times with the Impressionists. In 1890, Bagmore ceases her career, apparently under pressure from her husband, Felix Bagmore. Marie Bashketsev was born in 18. Uh, 58 in Gavronsi, Russia, now the Ukraine. She grew up with one brother in a wealthy noble family. Her parents separated while she was very young. She spent much of her youth touring Europe with her mother while her father remained in Russia. In 1880, Bashkirtsev exhibits in the Salon for the first time while she is enrolled in the private art school Académie Julien which accepted female students. Under the pseudonym Pore Laurel, she calls on the French Academy of Arts to open its doors to women artists, which did not happen until 1897. As I mentioned, Manet was an important figure to the Impressionists, including Eva Gonzalez. In 1869, she became Manet's only official pupil. The following year, she made her debut at the Salon with, among other works, The Burglar, now, which you can see now on the yellow wall in exhibition, which was a tribute to Manet's The Fifo, which you can see on the slide here. However, her paintings were overshadowed by her mentor, who exhibited, his, who exhibited his portrait of her at the same venue. And you can see the portrait on the left on the slide. The painting became the subject of severe criticism, not least directed at the model, which affected Gonzalez greatly. Nonetheless, Gonzalez remained dedicated to her art and experimented with various genres over the next few years including the burgeoning plein air painting. As mentioned, Beth Morisot took part in all eight Impressionist exhibitions, with the exception of the fourth in 1879, following the birth of her daughter, Julie, the previous year. Her work has all the characteristics of Impressionism, but her art was based on a different approach to that of her male colleagues. It was not well regarded for bourgeois women like Morisot to go about in the public urban space alone, like, like Charles Baudelaire's famous artist Flaneur. As a result, unlike many of the group's other painters, she was unable to paint the many variety of theatres, cafes, and other places of entertainment that characterized the new cityscape in Paris, as this would be seen as compromising her status as a respectable woman. Instead, she found her modern motives mainly in the domestic sphere, as the critic Edmond Duranty had suggested in his text on the new painting published in a in 1876. In particular, she portrayed women in the home and in the private gardens, occasionally painting the cities, parks, and the more remote scenic surroundings. And you will see some great examples on the slide here. In these pictures, some of which were painted out in the open, 
the rapidly applied brush strokes became in themselves an image of the volat volatility and speed of modernity. Let's have a closer look on the psyche mirror. The woman regarding herself in the mirror is a hired model, but the flowery bedroom is the artist's own. The picture invites us into the woman's intimate space, but at the same time keeps us at a distance. The reflection is blurred and visible only to the model herself. The picture was exhibited at the third Impressionist exhibition in 1877, where it was warmly received. And now let's move on uh, in the exhibition to the section on the works by Eva Gonzalez, which we have called an Impressionist at the Salon. Her unpleasant debut at the Salon in 1870 caused Eva Gonzalez to stay more or less out of the public eye. Her exhibition activity continued, however, including after she married the artist Henri Girard in 1879. Although Gonzalez's motives and style of painting make her part of the circle of impressionists, she chose never to exhibit with them. Instead, she preferred to stay within the official framework of the salon, like Manet. In 1882, Gonzalez exhibited her works in the salon for the last time. The following year, she died in childbirth, just aged 36. Her husband, Henri, and her father organized a comprehensive memorial exhibition, which was attended by prominent art and cultural figures who thereby gave recognition to a talent and significance. This, uh, sorry, um, the subsequent auction, however, was a failure and the vast majority of her works remained in the hands of her family and thereby became unknown to the public. Her son grew up with his father and Eva's sister, Shan, her preferred model, and in 1888, Shan married Eva's widower. And here we see Shan, Eva's younger sister, who modeled for many of her works, including these two paintings. Shan Gonzalez was also an artist in her own right, as can be seen in this unfinished work from the seaside resort of Dieppe to the right. In Audre Gars portrait of Shan to the left, the bright oil paint has been applied in thin light strokes reminiscent of pastels. The lightness of the picture is a typical impressionist characteristic, but it also in a way characterizes Shan. It is as though she is dissolving in front of uh, our eyes. Now we move on to the next gallery. Moiseau, Gonzalez, Cassatt and Bagmont primarily found their models among their family and friends. In pictures of their sisters in particular, they cultivated the figure known as the Parisienne, an elegant, urban and sophisticated woman who symbolized modern life in the capital. In this gallery that you see here on the slide, there are several portraits by Bagmont of her younger sister, Louise, dressed in white. They belong to a subcategory that the American painter James McNeil Whistler poetically described as symphonies in white, a category that was also cultivated by Moiseau, Gonzalez and Manet. Bagmont's career came to an early end in the 1890s. In, in 1890, sorry, apparently under the pressure from her husband, the artist Felix Pagmont. And today only uh, a few of her works are to be found in museums. And here you have a couple of her works. Also on the walls in this gallery, there are a number of impressionist gems by Cassatt. These pictures depict her older sister Lydia as she gradually weakened under the impact of the kidney disease 
that brought about her early death in 1882. With the passing of her sister, Cassatt lost her principal model and she subsequently intensified her focus on scenes with mothers and children. And here you see some of the paintings in the gallery. Marie Baskitsev, whose paintings you see on the walls here, did not belong to the Prussian circle, but she did share their ambition to be artists of their own time. As a painter, she followed in the footsteps of her friend, the painter Jules Bastien Lepage, and his dedication to realism and naturalism. However, while his main inspiration lay among the rural population, she drew inspiration from the urban environment, as did many of the Impressionists. Baskitsev is especially known for her diary, which was published in 1887 three years after her early death from tuberculosis at the age of 25. In the diary, which won a considerable readership and was soon translated into several languages, she describes the conditions under which a female artist lived in the Impressionist era. The two self-portraits that hang on the wall to the left reflect what she describes in the diary as a as a struggle for a place in history. In addition to her artistic work, Bashkitsev took on the role of what we today would describe as a feminist activist. Under the pseudonym Boril Aurel, she wrote several articles for the feminist journal, journal La Citoyenne, calling for better conditions for female artists. Bashkitsev self-portrait to the left on the slide here is her final self-portrait. Her gaze is directed at us and, and the canvas before her, and in her hand she holds her brushes and a palette. The harp in the background indicates her previously ambitious to become a musician and singer, which, which was thwarted by her disease. And now we move to the last gallery, and I hope you are still hanging, hanging in there. The Impressionists did not just find their motives in the city. Outdoor depictions of urban people relaxing in nature, as well as actual landscapes, were also among their favorite motives. In the years 80, 1881 to 1884, Beth Morisot and her husband Eugène Manet rented a house in Boucheval, west of Paris, where they spent the summers together with the daughter, daughter Julie. With its idyllic location on the Seine, the area attracted many of the period's plein air painters, and during her stay, Moiseau painted several works in the open air that came to be regarded as highlights in her career. Oh, sorry. These were the years that saw a culmination in the features of Moiseau's art that led some critics to, pro to proclaim her the only true impressionist. The bright colors, the short, rapid brushstrokes, brush the unfinished expression and the dissolution of the figures in the light saturated surroundings. The motifs from the Boucheval paintings are partly of the surrounding landscape along the Seine and partly the couple's daughter, Julie. We see her at play with her nanny, Pacey, and in the garden with her father. The latter group of pictures constitute rare depictions of fatherhood in the art of the period and in the history of Western art in general. <laughs> Here in the Marmoton painting to the left, we see Eugène Manet sitting on a bench in the garden while his daughter Julie plays with a game on his lap. The picture depicts Eugène as a modern man who supports his wife's artistic career by both modeling for her and looking after their daughter. 
It is said that in 1882, Eugène selected those works of his wife that were to that were to be exhibited at the Seventh Impressionist Exhibition, and that he chose this painting despite her reluctance. In 1894, Marie Cassatt bought the country house Chateau de Beaufren, northwest of Paris. It was not far from the home of Camille Pissarro and Claude Monet, whose penchant for the rule she shared. Just as Monet did in Chivani, she laid out a garden that, together with the site's pond, could form the background for new works. During the first year, Cassatt produced a whole series of paintings and graphic works there, including the famous Summertime, which you see on the slide here. Here she reminded, here she remained, sorry, uh, within the mother and child theme, but shifted the scene away from the typical domestic setting to a boat on the water. Cassatt spent the last years of, uh, spent, spent her last years at the country house, while many of her impressionist artists gradually fell away. In 1895, Moiseau died of funumia, aged 54, and in 1960, the 75-year-old Bagmont followed. The painting, The Bath on the, sorry, uh, on the right here on the screen, was completed just one year before Cassatt was diagnosed with cataracts, cataracts, sorry. Four years later, she had almost lost her sight and had to stop her career. Cassatt died at the age of 82 in 1926, the same year as Monet, which brought to a final end the groundbreaking art movement, which we know as Impressionism. And that was the end of my presentation. Thank you, thank you, Dorothy. Um, so before taking a couple of questions and also to give a few seconds and minutes to uh, the audience to put some question in the QA uh, box, um, I had a question for you about the uh, founder of the Ultra Guard Museum, uh, Hani Hansen, and his role as a collector of Impressionist art, but also uh, in particular uh, of Morizo's work, if I re recall correctly, and how uh, he was kind of an early collector of uh, her work. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, about that, about uh, the founder of this museum as a collector of women Impressionist arts. Yeah, um, Audre God was founded by Willem Hansen, who was an insurance magnet. And um, he started to collect Danish art in the beginning. And then later on, he started to collect works by, um, by the French Impressionists and post-Impressionists. And actually he was, um, he was an early collector of works by Morisot and also Eva Gonzalez. Uh, in her own lifetime, uh, Morisot uh, saw one of her works uh, being sold to the French state in 1894. Um, and of course, she was very happy about that because now she was seen as a professional artist and not just an amateur artist. Um, but many of her works was in private collections. But when um, Willem Hansen acquired his first work by Moiseau, in 1860, and uh, sorry, in the 1916, and the other one two years uh, later, those two works were actually um, the second and the third work by Moiseau to be included in a public collection to be on view. So he was, you know. Uh, 
um, he was a, an early collector. Also, he bought the work uh, which you sh I showed you in the in the presentation, the Reconvalescent by Eva Gonzalez. Um, he bought that painting in uh, 1918. And that was one of the first works as well to be included in a private collection. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, before I take uh, one question from the audience, would you mind turning your video on? Because I think it's off. So we can't see you anymore. I'll be continue. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, first question, uh, it was a two part question. Uh, this person asked, uh, you mentioned the Académie Julian as a institution that supported women artists. Were there other such organizations devoted to the artistic talent of women? And did artists like Morizo, Gonzalez, and Cassatt align themselves with other women artists, as Bashkit Surf seemed to do? So for, first question about uh, training institutions that supported women artists, and second about what is the meaning of a woman artist at the time? Yeah. And, uh, the the Academy um, Julien was one of the most famous uh, private schools that included that allowed women artists uh, to to take uh, to take lessons. Um, there were other private schools allowing women to be included as well. Um, if not, you could afford a school like that. Uh, you would have to um, uh, to take lessons from uh, an esteemed painter, uh, which they did. I mean, Bragmo um, was a student of Ancre, uh, for instance, uh, and actually she was one of his most uh, talented uh, student. But she was not happy there. I mean, he was a tough teacher and she wanted more with her art than just uh, painting still lives and, and portraits. She was, um, how to put it, she was more ambitious uh, than that and sought other ways to uh, educate herself. Um, the other question, whether the women artists aligned, uh, them, them uh, among uh, one another, actually they, they did not. I mean, they, they, they kind of um, had their own careers and they collaborated a lot with the male artists. Um, as we just saw, um, Eva Gonzalez was the student of Manet. Um, Manet and Beth Moiseau were close friends and, and had an art artistic uh, dialogue. The same with Mary Cassatt. She was, uh, she was very um, influenced by Degas and vice versa. There was really a close uh, artistic uh, exchange uh, between Degas and uh, Merrick So the, no, they, they didn't really uh, align themselves with one another, the women. They, they kind of, um, yeah, um, had their own separate careers. But of course, they, they, they were friends. Um, Beth Moiseau and Cassette, they, they, uh, they were friends and uh, they did uh, work together at one occasion. Um, so, you, so you wouldn't say that um, like Bashkir Tsef who was writing for La Citoyenne, there was no, 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 none of these other women artists where, where like, you know, the kind of what we would call today a feminist or like supporting. Well, Cassatt, yes. I mean, she was also, you know, involved in the women's emancipation. Um, so she, definitely she had um, an interest there and an engagement uh, in that regard. But not as a uh, bad boy, so did never, um, you know, it, it did never write or tell anybody of her uh, feminist um, um, 
ambitious. She she, she did not. Um, we, we don't know that. So uh, famous. Sorry. Uh, so I have we have one question that asks us. Please remind us uh, which artist had a link to Monaco. Thank you. Is that Eva Gonzalez that has a link to Monaco? Yeah, Monaco. her family was. Uh, yeah, uh, the family had roots in in Monaco and and, and Spain. Okay. And then we have a couple of market-oriented uh, questions. One is, uh, which of the four women artists works sell for the highest price now? Uh, mm -hmm. And the other is, it seems that many of these women did not have a lot of success selling their work during their lifetimes, with the few exceptions you've mentioned. Did all of them have dealer representation? Sorry, did they have dealer representation? Um, yeah, well, Borisot did, Cassatt did, um, uh, Gonzalez uh, did as well, uh, if I'm right. Um, and uh, I mean, an artist like Borisot, she did sell works in a lifetime. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Monet bought works of her, um, uh, uh, and, and several other uh, known artists bought her works, but um, many of them were in private collections. And especially regarding uh, Eva Gonzalez, I mean, her body of works have you know remained unknown to the public for for years because of this um, this auction that her husband and father uh, organized after her death was a failure. So, so the works, um, you know, they had to 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 buy the works themselves and and they had them stored or uh, installed in in their apartment. So for years they were unknown to 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 the public. Um, some of them were 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 sold, however, but not many. And and um, her her son uh, Jean Raymond actually he he did a huge effort in you know uh, securing his mother's reputation and legacy and he sold off some works and did uh, several exhibitions in galleries in Paris you know in order to secure the legacy of uh, of of his mother. Thank you. Uh, now we have a few questions regarding uh, the exhibition itself. Um, so first is um, how, uh, I mean, it's quite a feat to have organized this exhibition this year because those paintings are must be very much in demand. So it would be nice if you could talk a little bit about the organization of this exhibition. And then somebody is asking about where it is traveling and how uh, will, this, will this exhibition look like in this next iteration? Um, and yeah, that's, that's already two about this exhibition. So the first question, sorry. The first, was... the first is like, how did you organize this exhibition? Because it's uh, the year of the anniversary of yeah. Russianism. So a lot of these paintings must be in great demand. So mm -hmm. how, how is it to, to organize this show this year? And the other is about the next iteration. Mm -hmm. yeah. this and what will look like. Yeah, I, I mean, we had our thoughts, you know, um, going into this because, you know, the huge uh, exhibition on 1874 just opened in Paris, which is a, you know, huge manifestation. I mean, the ultimate exhibition on, on the first Impressionist exhibition. So, um, but actually we were positively surprised. I mean, uh, the lenders and our colleagues around uh, the world uh, have been really generous. And I think it's because of the theme, you know, um, of the women uh, artist that, uh, that is very much in demand. And, uh, you know, I think our colleagues uh, would like to support uh, this effort, uh, you know, to, to see uh, the women impressionists um, uh, gathered in, in one exhibition. So it it has been uh, we uh, it has really been a, a, a positive surprise, and also we we didn't um, have the difficulties that we thought we would have. I mean. Um, and especially uh, we were worried about having enough works by Mary Cassatt, 
because her works are primarily in the States and they, you know, it's, they can be difficult to secure to an exhibition, but they, they have really been most generous uh, with, with, with the project. So, so the, the exhibition will go to the National Gallery of Ireland after the Order of God venue. And they will have, uh, I think it's around 30 of the works presented here in Copenhagen. Um, and then they will have some additional works uh, as well. Hmm. By same artists or different artists? Sorry? Or is it the same artist or same? No, they, yeah. Well, they, they will have the four. They will focus on the the four uh, impressions. They will leave out uh, Basket Sef, um, but they will have works by Cassatt, Moiso, Eva Gonzalez, uh, and Marie Bagmore, of course. Someone is asking if there is a catalog in English. There is. Yes, yes there is. <laughs> There's yes. one in English. Yeah, uh, yes. in in one in in Danish as well. And a really, I mean, a question again about the exhibition is how did you uh, choose the five artists that are feature, feature in the exhibition? And are there any other uh, under the radar emerging uh, artists, women artists from that period that should also- Yeah, that's a lot of, yeah. That's a lot of women artists that should be, you know, shown. And we have a huge process, yeah, huge undertaking in, in doing that in the coming years. But we decided to focus primarily on Mauricio, Cassatt, Bagmont, and Gonzalez. Um, and also in the end, we, we, we decided to include Beshkut Sef as well. And, and we did that because they are the closest to, you know, the impressionist core, so to speak. Uh, but we, we, we thought that um, Beshkut Sef, we ended by including her as well because she is... Uh, you, you can consider her as the voice of the women artists at, at, in, in the Impressionist area. Um, and because um, the other artists, well, except from Mary Cassatt, they didn't really write anything. Uh, or they didn't have any testimony on the difficulties they faced, but they really did face some tough conditions. I mean, the, there's a book called The Obstacle Race, and, and they, they, there were a lot of obstacles for women artists at this time, just to, you know, being able to paint. They had their reputation to think of. They couldn't leave their home on a combinite. They couldn't call themselves artists without a certain loss of reputation. So they, they really had tough conditions uh, to, um, to practice their, their art. Um, yes, but there's a lot of women artists that, that ought to be shown, but we, you know, we had to kind of um, reduce the number uh, in order to have um, uh, the number of work, works uh, that fit to, to our galleries. And a question uh, about the original uh, eight impressionist exhibition. So the women artists who were not featured in any of the original eight impressionist exhibition, did they attempt to be included in those group shows or and were rejected or were they not on the radar of the key impressionist group at the, at the time? Oh yes, they, they, they were, I mean, Moiseau and uh, Bagmont were, and Cassatt, they were represented in the Impressionist exhibitions. Mm -hmm. well, but, so, yeah. Were there other women artists who tried to get into the Impressionist? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know today that there were actually, um, there were other women uh, who exhibited works, but they did it under pseudonym. So we don't know anything about them. We just know their, their pseudonym. So there's a lot of work there to be done as well. Um, yeah, there was another woman uh, in the first Impressionist exhibition who showed a work, and there were two others in one of the following exhibitions, mm -hmm. but we don't know their real names. And you say that you were uh, going to do more shows. It, it, did I understand that correctly at the art group about uh, women artists in the 19th century of the Impressionist and post-Impressionist circles? 
We do. We, we, we would like to, but we don't okay. have any planned uh, yet. Okay. okay. But that sounds like a good venue for this kind of uh, exhibition and this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We did we did a solo exhibition on uh, Bert Moiseau in uh, 2013 and another one on the graphic art uh, of Mary Cassatt um, in the same year, actually, in 2013. And then after that, the whole, you know, interest for uh, female artists arose and we thought that now now is uh, is the time uh, to to do a group show with women artists um, and actually works of Marie Bragmont and uh, Beskit Sef have, have never been uh, shown in Denmark before so it's the first time uh, for those uh, two artists to be shown in Denmark. Wonderful. Um, and we have also a question about sculptures. Uh, any women's sculpture at this time? Uh, thinking about Camille Claudel and things like that. Is there any uh, women's sculpture in the 19th century that also deserve their own uh, retrospective in some ways? I, 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 I would say yes. <laughs> the most famous is, is obviously Camille Claudel. And that's a wonderful exhibition with a at the Getty that just opened. Um, yes, I, I, you know, um, there are, mm -hmm. there are several. Okay. Um, Marie Bragmont uh, also did, you know, a lot of other medium than other than painting, and she also did ceramics, ceramics. And uh, as I mentioned, her work is not really known. There's not a lot of literature on uh, Marie Bagmore. And uh, there are works out there that we still do not know of. And that's kind of shocking. And as, as I mentioned, we don't even know whether she was born in 1840 or 1841. And that's, to me, is quite telling for the you know, you can really talk about an overlooked artist yeah. in her case. And those sculptures are, or these works are not well known because they are mostly in private collection and under the radar or? Is yeah, I, 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 I would say so, yeah. Okay. Um, one more question. Have the works on paper prints related to this woman been explored, expanded to accompany the painting? So are you presenting only paintings or are they also- No, we do, we do have some graphic works by Cassatt in the exhibition. Um, yeah. We have, yeah, we have some lovely um, prints um, borrowed from uh, Paris in the show. Because, you know, um, Mary Cassatt was really a pioneer uh, within the graphic art. And uh, she had a close um, collaboration with Degas and Pissarro and uh, that part of her oeuvre is really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was really uh, yeah, a pioneer uh, in that medium. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, one more question. There is a new exhibit, Marie Cassatt at work at Philadelphia Museum of Art coming in May. Is there ever a struggle to get certain paintings that are desired at the same time? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, um, we were lucky. We had uh, we, we were very happy by the number of cassette works that we were able to secure, mm -hmm. but we did request works that are going to the large Mara cassette uh, exhibition that are opening uh, in the states uh, next month. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. We're able to get all of this work. Um, I don't see any more questions that we have not answered. So what I might, my last question for you is like, if you had any other artists that you want us to absolutely Google in the next five minutes uh, after this to try to like look at amazing works, who would that be? Like another woman artist that you were not able to include in that exhibition and you think deserve uh, more attention or attention at all? Oh, that's, um, that's a good question. There's that's so many. Um, yeah, there's a problem. There are many, there are many, but you know, we have to start somewhere. 
Yeah, well, well, I think the the um, what really what is interesting, I would say, after having worked with this exhibition, is to do some more research on the other women that we which names we do not know, but but who showed works uh, at the impressionist exhibitions. I mean, that's that must be the next task uh, to 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 do. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to to uh, to hear learn more about these uh, women artists that we, we we don't only you know they, they really overlooked uh, women artists. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dorothy. Um, ah, I have one last question because we have a few minutes left. Uh, are there descendants, daughter, uh, daughter, sorry, descendant da daughters, siblings who have carried the work on? So, as a family or like descendants of any of these women artists, uh, helped with the legacy. I think you mentioned the son of Morisot. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, in her uh, in helping spreading or supporting her legacy. Is that the case for any other uh, of the artists, including in this show? And yeah. Other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th there are descendants, yeah, uh, who have uh, you know works of Moiso uh, and Gosales. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are quite more as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, in, in what ways have they been able to uh, keep their archive together or? Uh, keep the works or like make sure that the works were, you know, enter public collections? In what ways have their descendants helped with the legacy? The the uh, descendants of uh, Bert Moiseau, um, you know, did offer, the, the Roi family, they they did offer paintings to um, to French museums uh, and even donated works by Moiseau to French museums in order to, you know, secure her legacy. Um, so they really did uh, a great effort uh, to secure um, mm -hmm. visibility in, in, in public uh, collections. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mentioned Gonzalez's son who, who also worked actively uh to you know to secure his mother's reputation mm -hmm. um Seth, we you know she died as a 25 year old and there's not many works by her that we know and um we only know about 40 paintings by her hand and um unfortunately some works were destroyed during the Second World War. So there's unfortunately not many works to to um, to, 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 <laughs> to borrow. Um, so it's important you know to do these kind of exhibitions and show the, the few works that remain left mm -hmm. uh, in order to you know, um, have focus mm -hmm. on this facet of impressionism. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a great uh, way to end this conversation on this great opportunity, bringing these works together. The show will travel to Ireland. And if we can't see any of the show, there's Marie Cassatt, as you mentioned uh, as well. And there are other occasions to see works by women artists uh, of the late 19th century uh, this year. So that's going to be uh, great. And as for us, uh, the WPI, we're hosting another um, uh, series, another session in this series on uh, women and uh, the Impressionist Circle on May 3rd, and it will be dedicated to Eva Gonzalez. Uh, so I uh, invite you to join in uh, during this uh, May 2nd, sorry, uh, during uh, this session. Thank you, Dorothy, and I wish you the best of luck with the remaining of the show. It's on until May no, April. 20th, 20th of May. 20th of May. Okay, so we have another couple of months. Thank you very much again. And Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Bye. Bye.